So we love true crime around here, especially me. And a new documentary on HBO goes deep in the Australian outback to explore how the mysterious disappearance of a man named Paddy Moriarty and his dog led to neighbors in a small town pointing fingers. Take a look. Barry didn't report Paddy missing for 72 hours, and he's supposed to be a good mate, right? I mean, he could have been done in, dumped away somewhere. I said to detectives, and they will tell you this, look further into the pub. There's a lot of lies over there. And I reckon them over there know what happened to Paddy. The pub knows what happened. Here to tell us all about his debut documentary, Last Stop Larima, is the director of the film, Thomas Tancred. Welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. Okay, so I consume a lot of true crime, yeah. but I've not seen anything like this. This town is special, but tell us a little bit about the story and the unsolved mystery of it all. Okay, so Larima is a tiny little town in the Northern Territory of Australia. And, uh, you know, the back in the day, the 60s, 70s, 80s, it was kind of a thriving town. There was like a railroad station there. And then just over time, um, just like many towns in America, they just kind of started to fade away. Um, and then in 2012, a guy named Patty moves to town. And by that point, there's only 10, 11 of them there. 10 or 11 people in a town. Yeah. <laughs> That's a small town. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, one night, Patty goes to the pub with his dog like he did every night, and he has a little quad, and he just drove home from the pub and never seen of again. Now, this is your debut documentary, so congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> aside from the distinction of this very interesting, very small town, what was it about the story of Patty Moriarty that drew you in? Um, it was the people in the town. Um, you know, I. I found this story just scrolling through Twitter, and then I found a video of a news team who had gone down there and interviewed some of the people. And as soon as I saw some of the people, I was like, oh, wow, these people are just fantastic characters. Yeah. Um, and that's what kind of led me to it originally. Well, because the story behind the documentary is about Patty, but the documentary dives into some of these characters in this town you yeah. speak of, uh, a place with no cell phone service, no police station, and less than a dozen residents. Yeah. Tell us more about the town and how you got to such a remote place. Yes, yeah, so usually what happens is I'll kind of look for a story and then I'll track down the people and they'll already be with maybe another production company or something. But I think because of this, it was so far away. And actually people told me like, hey, the people down there will not talk to you. Don't even try to talk to them. And I was kind of giving up the dream and I'm one of those people who have, you know, 20 tabs open on my computer, and I was just kind of giving up, being like, all right, I spent six months trying to do this, I gotta find the next one. And then I just randomly clicked on the bar, and it called, and Barry, who's the pub owner, picked up the phone, and I was like, introduce myself, and he's like, no, mate, like, I'm not gonna talk to you. And then we just kept talking for a while, and then he said, if you fly here, I will talk to you. So he was just kind of like the first one. I was like, okay, if I can get to Barry, because the pub in the town is kind of like the heart. That's all yeah. they have, you know? Um, so I was like, if I can get to him, maybe I can get to the rest of them. So that's how it all started. When I know your parents uh, were, are, were Australian. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you have some connection to Australia. Yeah. And I definitely tried to use that to kind of explain like, hey, I'm not just some random American coming down here. I do like know Australia. So they weren't alien to me. But you would even explain how your dad being a little older, there's a generation of people that just didn't talk. So yeah. beyond the pub, Barry, like how'd you get people to open up to you? Yeah, that was the interesting part. So when I first got down there, so the, the town is very divided. I almost feel like it's like a high school with a bunch of 70 year old people. Like the average age there is like 75. Okay. And they're either with Barry in the pub or they're on the other team. And the interesting thing when I first got down there was that none of Patty's friends would talk to me, but all of his enemies would talk to me. So that was kind of the first part of being like, okay, why aren't these people talking to me? But then it was like, you know, I know you're a true crime fan too. It was very interesting the first time being down there because let's say you're one of the residents, you're telling me terrible things about that person. Yeah. And then I have to go talk to that person. They've told me how terrible you are and you might've killed this person. So I was kind of playing the true crime game like the whole time I was there. Well, so as you just mentioned, he's either seen as the good guy or the bad guy, depending on which half yeah. of the town you're hanging out with. Yeah. So what did you learn about him as you made the film? 
it's sad, you know, this film is only made because somebody went missing and was probably murdered, you know, and that's Patty. And during the process, I got to try to, you know, he's not around, but try to get to know him, know his friends. So I would travel to different towns, and this is pieces that didn't make it into the film, but, um, you know, he was uh, born in Ireland, found his birth certificate, only a mother on it. 15, he gets shipped over to Australia for work. And then he just constantly has this history of moving to places and kind of getting kicked out. Um, so I think Patty was probably like a great friend to have, but I think if Patty didn't like you, he might have been a bit scary. The story's told in five parts, and each part you feel like you figured out who did it mm -hmm. in the whole like unveiling. Yeah. Um, but everyone claims to be innocent. Yeah. So do you believe the neighbors were actually capable of killing him? Yes. Uh, you know, the, the more I was down there and, you know, there's parts that aren't able to get into the film, but, you know, you learn a lot about these people and people will tell you things on the side like, hey, you know, this happened once and that kind of led me to believe that it was possible. This sounds like a really creepy town, if I'm being <laughs> honest. It only runs 11 people deep, but yeah. it is scary. Um, now, Patty's disappearance is still a mystery. It's an open case. So mm -hmm. do you get a sense uh, from the residents that they want this to be resolved? Yeah, you know, I mean, I definitely think they want it to be resolved just to kind of get past it all. Um, I also think it's just part of just human nature, right? You need an answer to it. So, and I also think they're just kind of like over just them, like this being the focus of the town. I think they're kind of sad that like, this is the only thing the town is about now. So w what do you hope uh, bringing this story to an American audience will do for this little town of Laramont? Because it's scaring me so far. Well, you know, it, I'll be honest with you. My first time driving down there, because it, you know, it takes a while to get there. So it, you have to fly it to Australia. It takes a while to get to Australia. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So 16 hours to Australia, then seven hours up to the Northern Territory, then in a car for six hours. And when you're there, when you're driving in there, it does feel like you're kind of getting to Mars because it's just this red dirt, so desolate, kangaroos on the side of the road. You know, it feels, it is another world. Um, and, you know, honestly, like, I got to know these people. I really like them all, even though what I just said, you know, like, you know, good people can do bad things, right? Yeah. Um, and I just hope they're proud of the film, honestly. And, you know, I think what happens with the town kind of relies on the pub. Uh, the pub is no longer with Barry, it's with other people. So I guess it's just like, if that can get going, then maybe the town can come back. I know you can't ruin this. I don't, I'm not looking for a spoiler. Yeah. You think the neighbors are capable. Do you have a theory out of all of it as to what happened? Yeah, I do, I do. Um, and I think, you know, in the film, we, we we kind of explain that theory. And I also think the police have that theory too. Um, but the thing that happened is Patty vanished and in that part of the world, you know, if something's on the side of the road, it's gone in a day because it's just eaten by the elements, the animals and everything. So yeah, I do, I, I think I have a pretty good idea. Okay, if that is not a tease, a big <laughs> thank you to Thomas Tancred. Last Stop Larima premieres October 8th on HBO and streams on Max the next day. Have a great day.